I know as we get closer to the weekend, a lot of us are thinking about how we can get in and out of the grocery store as fast as we can, uh, adjusting to the new normal, waiting in line to get into a grocery store like a Wegmans or a Costco or wherever you happen to be going. And I know that a lot of us are trying to take shortcuts to get in and out of places where we can, um, ordering online or having the stores delivered to us. Um, we're all looking for ways. Uh, one way, one thing though to keep in mind is when it comes to taking shortcuts, one thing that you don't want to shortcut is selling or transferring or giving away your gun or firearm in Pennsylvania or New Jersey. You have to understand that it's, there is a procedure to that. I'm going to link in some articles that I wrote on this issue, but basically in Pennsylvania, the legal sale or transfer of firearm can be graded as a misdemeanor or a felony offense. Now, it's graded as a misdemeanor offense if you sell or transfer the weapon to a person who could otherwise possess it. So basically, you have a friend and the friend wants to buy your, your handgun, you sell it to them at your house. You can be charged for that, it would be a misdemeanor charge. It gets a little more serious where you're dealing with a situation where your friend asks you to sell you a gun and you do it not knowing that your friend is a convicted felon or some other type of prohibited person. It, it, it isn't just felony offenses. There are other reasons why a person will be considered a prohibited person. You have to keep that in mind. So in that situation, you can be charged with a felony of the third degree or possibly a felony of the second degree where it's a second or third transfer. And frequently, I've represented people in situations where they have no previous criminal history, but now they're dealing with a situation where they're facing a possible mandatory minimum five-year sentence because of selling some guns. And they believed initially it was just a simple transaction and it was no big deal. But what they come to find out is, is that their friend Bob or Joe was a convicted felon and they weren't able to possess those weapons. So one of the reasons why you need to go to a a, a gun dealer to do the transfer is because that's the law. Second reason is because the dealer there will do a background check on the purchase on the purchase order. So if you were to do it at your house and, and sell it, remember the state doesn't really care the amount of the transfer. What the state is focused on is the actual transfer and giving away. So even, so even if you sell it for you know not just an insignificant amount of money, that's not the issue. The issue is the person receiving it. So if you, in a situation where you sell a gun to a convicted felon, that first transfer, serious crime, felony of the third degree, the second transfer, whether or not it occurs at that, you know, to the same person or a different person, that second transfer carries with it a mandatory minimum five year state prison sentence. And what that means is basically, even if you have no prior criminal history, you face that. And while there are things that the Commonwealth can do to agree to demanitorize a charge, they're not obligated to do so. So keep that in mind. Also, when it comes to weapons, just remember that if you're traveling into New Jersey from Pennsylvania, Jersey does not honor Pennsylvania gun permits. To get a permit in New Jersey, it's nearly impossible. I've written articles on this. I've written articles on the fact that Pennsylvania does have reciprocity with some states, but not New Jersey. So when it comes to firearms, keep all this in mind. I know that a lot of us are busy. A lot of us have a lot of downtime right now. Some of us uh, are obviously not in a position where we can spend money or even make money, but we, uh, a lot of us are looking for things to pass time. And I know people are cleaning out their houses and finding things, and obviously a weapon should never be kept like a normal piece of merchandise in your house, but there are situations where people want to get rid of things. And just remember that guns are different. If you have questions regarding the sale or purchase of a gun, you can always call our office at 215-755-9000 or email me at alfonso at gambleandwall.com. We answer our calls 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our law firm is uh, still representing clients throughout the shutdown. We are very active representing clients for bail petitions, emergency hearings, and right other aspects of their cases which are happening right now. So if you have questions, please call us. Again, when it comes to gun charges, if you are charged, remember that police need probable cause to search your car, don't ever consent to a search. Finally, 
If you're charged, don't make any statements. Don't say anything about the gun, where you're going, whose gun it is. Don't say anything. If please say, hey, we will go easy on you if you just tell us what happened. Respectfully, don't answer any questions. Wait for a lawyer, hire your attorney, and go from there. Uh, and that's the best advice I can give anyone in those situations. So for more information, please contact us. I wish you well. I hope you're all staying healthy, and I'll talk to you soon.